Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala barakatuh Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala syarifil anbiya Al-Mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Alhamdulillah uh, We are continuing on to, on to our series of Life coach training program for you all So we are doing this based on our book Positive Islamic Psychology A Transcendent Model To Achieve Peace, Happiness and Success In the 21st Century And uh, this book also, inshallah, will upload, upload into our islamicpsychology.net eh? And our life coach training program, our intention, inshallah, over the many years To train 10,000 of you So you can be from any part of the world, as long as you understand English You can join us, online course, free of charge, certified by our Khalifa Education Foundation and Islamic Psychology Center And that you can use that as a basis for you to serve your community, serve the mosque as well as you can also use the certification uh, later on to build up a career in coaching, counselling, mentoring and so on uh. so what is important is that we have explained to you the philosophical basis of atheism uh, in the previous video so what does the early man say about the ancient man look at the beautiful sky and they realise there must be a supernatural being that means when you modern man we have been disconnected we are now only seeing the neon light of the cities and we do not see the stars anymore so once we are disconnected with the reality of the absolute wonder of this universe we are disconnected with God so that's why because we are living in a city we don't even see the night sky we don't even see the billions and trillions and trillions of stars over the night sky and we cannot understand why we are here so it's very important that for us to understand that this earth is just a mere nothingness It's just a little atom in the whole scheme of things So I'm going to give you two videos And then from there I'll explain to you why There is a need for a creator who created this wonderful universe For us to understand our existence on this earth, inshallah just vast, it's enormous. There's nowhere human mind, I think, can actually comprehend the, the, the true immensity of the universe. We're happy with the size of an elephant, or the size of a tree, or maybe even the size of Durham Cathedral. But I think if we go beyond that, then our brains just start to run out of gas. It may be difficult for our brains to comprehend, but that hasn't stopped astronomers endeavouring to measure the distance to the stars. One technique is to use a phenomenon called parallax. Everybody can actually experience parallax for themselves. If you hold your thumb up and close one eye, you can see that your thumb appears to be in a certain position relative to something behind your thumb. But then if you open that eye and close the other eye, you'll see your thumb appears to move relative to the object behind. The same thing happens when we look at the stars. When we look at a relatively nearby star from the Earth, it appears in a certain position relative to the other background stars. Six months later, when the Earth is on the opposite side of the Sun, the same star will appear in a different position relative to the background. Like opening and closing one eye then the other, the star appears to move, and by measuring this apparent movement, we can calculate the true position of the star. An alternative method of measurement is to use certain stars in the sky known as standard candles. We know exactly how brightly they shine. If we can therefore measure how bright they appear to us on Earth, we can calculate how far away they are. The dimmer they appear, the further they are from the Earth. So the nearest star to the Sun is Proxima Centauri, and that, it turns out, is 40 trillion kilometres away. That's 40 million million kilometres away from the Earth. Such numbers start to become incomprehensible. And that's why astronomers have adopted an alternative unit of measurement for such vast distances, the light year. A light year is the distance that light will travel in one year. If you imagine light moving around the Earth in one second, so in that time, light will travel around the Earth over seven times. So that's fast. The speed of light is 300,000 kilometers a second. 
So one light year is about 9 million million kilometers. The speed of light also leads to a curious consequence when we stare at the stars. So the light from the sun takes eight minutes to get to the earth. Um, that essentially means we're looking into the past. We're looking back at the sun as it was eight minutes ago. So if the sun was to disappear right now, we wouldn't know for eight minutes. So a telescope, if you like, is a time machine. We're looking back in time and the further the object is away from us, the further back in time we're seeing it. Our sun, like nearly all the stars we can see with the naked eye, sits inside the galaxy we call the Milky Way. But our galaxy is not alone in the universe. Not everything you can see in the night sky is actually in our galaxy. Um, it turns out that some of those faint dots are in fact other galaxies. The furthest object you can see actually with, with the unaided eye is another galaxy called Andromeda. The light from that galaxy has taken something like two and a quarter million years to get to the Earth. So if you imagine if we reverse the scenario and you're looking at the Earth from Andromeda with a very powerful telescope, you'd see no signs of cities, no civilization, no Great Wall of China. You might be lucky enough to see one or two sort of early humans uh, hunting around on the African plains for their dinner, maybe. Astronomers have always wanted to see further, using bigger and better telescopes to try and find out just how many other galaxies are out there. Until finally, we pointed the Hubble telescope at what at first appeared to be a very dark and ordinary patch of the night sky. If you imagine holding up your finger with a grain of sand on it and looking at the patch of sky that grain of sand blocks out, that's the field that the telescope zoomed in onto. And what the telescope saw was incredible. Every single speck of light in this photo is a galaxy. 10,000 galaxies in a patch of sky the size of a grain of sand held at arm's length. If this tiny patch of sky is like every other, then we can calculate how many galaxies are out there. The visible universe contains around 100 billion galaxies. Each one of those galaxies contains around about 100 billion stars. That means the visible universe contains something like 10,000 million, million, million stars. That means there are more stars in the visible universe than there are grains of sand on the Earth. The light from some of these most distant galaxies has taken around 13 billion years to get here. That's light travelling at 300,000 kilometres a second. The visible universe stretches around 13 billion light years from the Earth. So we've said the universe is big. I'm going to try and give you some idea how big. Imagine the Earth as a grain of sand. If that was the case, then our solar system out to the orbit of the planet Neptune would be as big as Durham Cathedral. So now let's imagine we take our solar system and we shrink it down to the size of this grain of sand. Then our galaxy, the Milky Way, would be a thousand times bigger than this cathedral. So now we take the Milky Way galaxy and shrink it down to the size of the grain of sand the cathedral would be the entire visible universe. The universe is big. It's really big.
So Alhamdulillah, uh, this is to tell you that if somebody says he is an atheist, he doesn't believe in God. Look at all this creation because this earth started when there was the so-called Big Bang. We have a beginning of the existence of this universe at 13.7 billion years ago. And it is expanded so rapidly that even the, the visible universe is just one little stem of the whole scheme of the universe. So it's so huge you can't even imagine. It's infinity. Even the physical existence is infinite. And our earth is just the size of one teeny weeny atom. Not even the size of a grain of sand. It's just one atom. And here we are living in this one atom. And here we are fighting each other over who is going to build a rocket here, who is going to uh, kill somebody, who is going to conquer anybody. It's just uh, an illusion of nothingness. That's why in Islam, we, we are told to understand that the Allah, the Creator, is beyond space and time, beyond this physical universe. He is the Creator of everything. And because of that, we submit to Him and try to strive to make this world a wonderful world because beyond this physical plane there is the plane of the akhirah the spiritual realm that is beyond space beyond time close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the realm that we will journey after the our after our sojourn on this earth we will go on to the next plane of existence and this earth and all the universes will also have a time period for it when it when the time comes it will be as mentioned al quran bismillahir rahmanir rahim iza zulzilatil ardu zilzalaha wa akhrajatil ardu athqalaha wa qala al insanu ma laha that there will be a heavy shaking and the earth will pour out whatever it has and then mankind will ask what is happening to us so there will be an end time for this earth for this star for this universe for this physical universe but there is no end time for our existence in the realm with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the realm of joy, in the realm of happiness, in the realm of Jannah which is promised to all believers so if you see a atheist just don't argue with them show them this and let them think, reflect over their nights and think who is this creator of this wonderful existence of this universe that is beyond all imagination and our earth is just a little teeny weeny atom not worth fighting for so we must lead a life of peace of happiness of fulfillment being realizing that we are the servant of allah his caliph on this earth always striving to make ourselves good helping others to be good and making the world good inshallah <laughs>